All right, guys, so before we get started, I'm going to do something that is going to be a little bit uncomfortable for some of you, okay? Hope you're cool with that. It's a workshop. It's not just a speech. So in a second, I'm going to choose randomly two people because we don't have so much time. Two people. And to push your comfort zone, you just want to come up to the stage and talk about your biggest fear for one minute, max one minute, okay? So I'm going to pick two people. No volunteers, because volunteers want to do it, right? Hmm. Yeah, I know, I know, I know you want, I want to pick you. Hmm. Hmm. Me. It's a tough one, it's a tough one. All right, okay. Guys, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to pick anybody. But, okay. <laughs> Why did I do it? Why? Because... Because I'm a bastard, I just want to play around. No, I hope not, right? Uh, am I a good guy? Sometimes. <laughs> I did it because I want to show you something. I bet that some people right now here were very excited about the prospect of coming up here and talking, right? Maybe one or two people. But I also feel like most of you had increased heartbeat, right? Some of you were probably pretty afraid of coming here and, and talking about yourself. Maybe some of you were so afraid that you started thinking, shit, maybe I should just go to the bathroom now so he doesn't pick me. True? Yeah? What did you feel? What emotions did you feel when I was walking, kind of looking at you? Some of you, did you feel a bit uncomfortable? Yeah, you felt that, right? A little bit, right? Uh, my mind was like, what's my biggest fear? What's my biggest blame? Yeah, what's going to happen? You know, how, will he pick me? Now, why is that? Now, my biggest fear was to talk in English. <laughs> Is it, oh, is it really? Like yeah. the, the fear of talking in English, you said. It's not my biggest fear, but that was what I was Oh, really? Ah, uh, okay. No, I can't talk in English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody speaks great English, but I, I know what you mean. We all, always have those weird thoughts, right? Now, we have a small group here, and you guys are pretty successful, right? But when I present in front of, say, 200 people, most people are so stressed, especially students, right? They are sitting, and when I walk closer to someone, like when I walked up to you guys at the end, you probably thought I'm going to pick you because I'm like, okay. And I looked at you. Most people are just sitting, and they are trembling. Like, no, don't pick me, you know? And it happens because we are afraid of rejection, right? And why is that? It's pretty crazy because you could talk to anybody here one-on-one. -on -one, it wouldn't be a problem. You could share anything. You could talk about your biggest fears. You could talk about your childhood. It's not a problem. But suddenly when you put 10, 20, 100 people in front of you, oh my God, please, I don't want to do anything, right? Now it happens because when you have more people in the audience, that fear of rejection multiplies, right? 10 people in the audience, 10x. 100 people, 100x. You have a camera, oh my God, maybe they're going to publish it. What if I make a fool of myself and everyone can see it forever, right? Why is it called fear of rejection? For me, it would mean like the fear of not getting chosen. Wow. It means you're at a different level now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You, you're, no, he said the fear of not getting chosen. So you would actually want to participate. And okay. no, but that's the way I would understand mm -hmm. it if you say the fear of rejection. Because for me, to reject means that I um, will not get picked. Mm -hmm. right? If I fear it, I would fear not to get ah, picked. You see, that's a good mindset. Okay. But I see you're at a totally different level. Okay. Because most people are afraid that when they go in front of others, they're going to be speaking here. And they feel like they will be judged by everyone, right? They feel like everyone will think about them all the time. But the reality is that, you know, we very often we fall into this trap where we think that other people constantly judge us. They constantly think about us, and they are always pondering about what's happening with us. But we don't realize that people are too busy thinking about themselves, right? So right now I'm standing here, and I could be focusing on, oh, my God, I'm on a stage in front of those people. There's a camera. Everyone is waiting for me to make a mistake. Everyone is like waiting for me to, I don't know, trip or forget what I want to say or whatever. But the truth is that you probably, now you are focusing on the value I'm producing for you, right? You're thinking about yourself. Maybe you're thinking about how good that beer was and, you know, different things, but you're probably not focusing on me. So we always have to remember it when we present on a stage. But let me share with you a story of embarrassment, story of failure that happened to me many years ago that's going to portray how I couldn't handle that fear of rejection, okay? It's always very weird to share the story. Every time I share it, it doesn't matter, small audience, big audience, one person, it's strange because as humans, we don't want to share our failures and weaknesses, right? 
So I remember many years ago, I was still at university. I was in this organization called ISEC. And one day, we were supposed to deliver a presentation in front of maybe 80, 100 people. And I remember I was sitting there. I was not sure, but anyway, I was sitting there and uh, <laughs> waiting for my turn, feeling quite confident. I felt fine. I'm like, OK, I can do it. Two, three minutes before the presentation, I'm sitting there, and something weird starts happening. My heart is beating faster, right? I'm sweating like crazy. My hands are like kind of trembling. Like, what the hell is going on? The more I think about it, the more I feel it. And then I start having this weird internal dialogue. What if I go there and everybody will notice it? What if people will reject me? Maybe they will judge me. Maybe I'm going to go out there and literally run away mid-sentence. And it got overwhelming. Have you ever had a situation like this? Anybody here? Please tell me at least some people, you know? <laughs> you had it, yeah? How many of you? Ever, to some extent? All right, wow. You too, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So most of us have those situations, right? And what do we do in those situations? Well, you have to face a dilemma, fight or flight. Now, guess what I did? <laughs> I ran away from the stage. I literally, <laughs> I literally ran away. It was crazy. I, I wanted to push myself, but I literally felt like if I go out there, I'm going to pass out from fear. That's how I felt. I felt like. My, my brain was spinning so much, I couldn't collect my thoughts, and I felt like, that's it, it's over. So I literally stood up, I said to one of my friends, hey, I have a stomach problem, and I just, I just left the room. And seriously, I left the room. Everyone was looking at me, thinking, what the hell is going on with that guy? And i never forget, I was standing in the toilet, and you know, all that anxiety, all that fear kind of got smaller and smaller and smaller. I felt more comfortable. I retreated back to my comfort zone, in the toilet, right? <laughs> standing there. But something weird happened. Even though all that anxiety was almost gone, something else, something much worse took its place, right? Because suddenly I feel that regret, right? And uh, you know what I'm talking about. I see you're nodding your head. Yeah, yeah exactly, shame. Exactly. I, I felt like, a, I literally, to be honest with you guys, I, stand, I was standing there thinking to myself, I'm not a real man. Like, if I can't even talk to a bunch of people, how can I call myself a man? It went to that point. But then something else happened, right? I realized that I can't run away forever because there will be another situation later on where someone will tell me, you got to go and you got to present, or a job interview, or a pitch, or whatever it is. And I can't just keep telling people, hey, I have a stomach problem. You know, I feel great in the morning, and the next thing you know, oh, we need a volunteer. Hi, Jimmy, why don't you come up to the stage? Oh, I have a stomach problem again. You can't do it forever. So I realized that I had to go back there, I had to go back to the arena. Wasn't easy, but very slowly I started going back, heavy legs, right? It's kind of going like this, just overthinking what's going to happen, but I decided I'm going to do it. And I never forget when I opened the doors, my head was exploding. I opened them, everyone is looking at me in silence. Like they saw a ghost, right? What this guy is doing here, right? And uh, I just showed up randomly mid like sentence. Somebody was presenting already. And I was so stressed out, but I went there. And I had no idea what was going on, but I just said, hi, guys. Um, I had a stomach problem. Uh, I'm really sorry, but let me share something with you. And I started very slowly, no confidence. But with every sentence, I felt more and more and more comfortable. And within a few minutes, I was like, OK, I'm just talking to people, not a big deal. They are nodding. They are enjoying it. It's cool. And after the presentation, they told me, um, you know what? This was actually pretty good. We enjoyed it. And that was a big lesson, right? Actually, two lessons. So the first lesson was that we overthink what people think about us, right? Before, I thought that everybody will be judging me. But I realized that nobody was judging me. Everyone wanted me to do well. And just because I felt certain emotions and feelings doesn't mean that people can see it. I may be scared shitless deep inside, but if I get to the arena, people may not even see it. And that's so important. So next time when you present, I know you're going to be presenting on a big stage, right? You feel those butterflies, you feel your heart beating. Always got to remember, people can't see it. Let me use it to my advantage. The second lesson was that when you're afraid of something, it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger if you don't take any action, right? And sometimes it gets overwhelming. By the way, how many of you here ever skydived or did bungee jumping? Hurrah, cool, nice. We have like five, five insane people in the room, right? Who wants to skydive at some point here? 
All right, awesome. <laughs> you want to do it again, yeah? <laughs> no, it was bungee jumping. Ah, bungee jumping. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool, cool. So you guys know the feeling, right? You're on a plane and you have to push yourself. It's against your instincts, right? I had this in Dubai, I was skydiving 3,000 meters above the sea level. The light turns green, the doors open, and suddenly, you know, that weird feeling. You, he skydived, by the way, like a week ago, right, in, in Berlin. Suddenly, this ice cold air rushes in, and you realize I have to do something really strange, something totally against my, you know, like my, my feeling of being a human. So you're standing there, this is the edge, right? And you're supposed to literally push yourself, but you can't even hold it. You're supposed to push yourself like this. So it's very counterintuitive. Intellectually, you know that nothing will happen. You know that you'll probably survive, but your emotions go crazy. Your emotions are telling you that you will not survive, right? But then what happens? You push yourself, and literally within a second, while you're dropping 200 kilometers down per hour, all that anxiety, all that fear is gone, just like this, right? and something else takes its place. You feel exhilaration, you feel that excitement, and you feel pride. And that's how I felt that day. I just felt, wow, I pushed myself once again. This is so amazing. And that day was one of the best days of my life. Seriously, one of the best days. Because after doing that, I felt, you know what, now everything seems so simple. Now making that phone call or doing a pitch or doing whatever is so simple. I almost died, you know? That was my feeling, I almost died on that plane. So, the same applies to public speaking. Sometimes we are afraid to push ourselves, but we have to remember that the moment you're afraid, if you just take the, the, the first most action to face your fear, right? Something really, really tiny, then you will basically take the force away from that fear. Otherwise, if you just keep staring at it, it's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger.